extensive career in child welfare, work, welfare, and currently works for the Newport News Police Department in Virginia here as a domestic violence specialist. Yes. I will also say that when you see Cheryl, Cheryl doesn't know how to say no. Can I get a witness? Yes. Uh, many times if somebody comes and asks her to do something or asks her to speak, she seems to figure out a way in which to get that engagement in. And so I want to just recognize is that those that have sat on boards with Cheryl, uh, if you're here from the Grove Foundation, if you're here from the Grove Foundation, just wave your hands in the air and wave it like a just don't. Okay, all right, okay, amen. All right, those who have been uh, serving with her on the Hampton Centera Careplex Hospital for the Ethics and Grievance Committee. Here in spirit, all right, all right. Those that serve part of the Newport News Police Department, homicide uh, support group facilitator, just for she's done. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the house, all right. Uh, those of us, uh, well, y'all might have here. Y'all wait for y'all turn, okay? I'm going to get to you in just a second. Uh, because he has extensive. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but at the same time, uh, let me also ask anybody served with her part of the critical incident stress management team. All right, Community Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Amen. All right, Tears, Grief and Loss Support Group founder, founder right there in Calvary, Stephanie and Mrs. Church. Anybody served on the Calvary Church Elders Board?
Thank you again for Dr. Carroll. Now, at this particular time, Mei Lin, are you ready for your part? I'm ready. You are ready. So at this time, we're going to welcome Mei Lin Chambers to the microphone. And Mei Lin has a special gift to know you about her mom. Yes, I do. Hello, everybody.
there's another pack, there's another kind of there. There are other crazy kinds. Thank you so much. I was uh, really focused in last night. If you haven't noticed already, we're a family of orators. It just goes on and on. But it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to introduce yet another family member who would love to share an anecdote. I'm speaking of Attila McTiger, all the way from Jamaica. Cheryl for about 35 plus years. 
years. And really, um, um, she grew up in the, you know, just the bougie side of Montreal. Uh, uh, we grew up, we grew up in the South Montreal. Uh, but, you know, sure enough, we got connected at Oakwood College, 96. And so when I got to Oakwood, you know, it was about seven of us. And, you know, it was three young ladies that literally I was responsible. I have a lot of stories, but I'm going to say, I'm going to share this story with you all. I was responsible to drive Sarah to Montreal and back. Christmas Day, Thanksgiving, whatever we had to break, summertime, you know, it will be just three young ladies or five young ladies. Now, what happens when you travel with, with women? What happens when you have to be the only, only man and, and only guy in the van, in the car? You know something's going to happen, right? You know, they don't talk, they don't say all kinds of stuff, all right? I was, I was, I was mentally abused. But I survived, I survived, I survived. So I just want to share this story with you all because really this is emotional. One of the things that I learned, you all know that her favorite uh, chips is ketchup. So we talked about that. Uh, so it was 99, January 99, we said January uh, 1st, we traveled. We had to go to Oakwood, leave from Montreal, and you can look it up. It was one of the worst storm um, in the Great Lakes, right? That was the worst, I mean, this is, when we got to, literally, to Detroit, driving now, they had about at least over five feet of snow. I mean, cars were all over. And typically, I mean, the drive was like, like from, from Montreal to, to Huntsville, Alabama, was about like 17 hours, right? But this time, it literally took us 36 hours, right? 36 hours, and literally, when we got to Detroit, I was driving like doing like Toledo. I was doing about like 20 miles, and they were singing, they were praying, and you know we made sure that we had water and ketchup chips, <laughs> right? So, so she gonna be all right, all right? But what really took place was either we'll get stuck. And something might happen to us, right? Or car could break down, or I mean, we could be stopped in a hotel. Everything was shut down. And 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 I was not gonna allow the ladies to drive. I was determined to drive. And all I remember was Sheriff's mother said, Eric, take care of my daughter. Uh, so while we were in a van driving now. Uh, we reached over to Toledo, and I mean, it was just bad on the road. And so literally, it was an 18 year truck that either I hit the truck and we all ended up dying, huh? or it's just one of those, I just really didn't know what to do, all right? But, and here, all of them were screaming. And all I heard was Sarah's voice say, Jesus. Um, and when she called the name of Jesus, I promise you all, you remember, the, the vengeance stopped. Now, remember, you can't, I mean, rubber on ice, I mean, you, you can't do it. I mean, freezing rain, um, blizzard, and the van literally stopped. In front of the ancient real. I mean, it just, just stopped. When she called the name of Jesus, while everyone was just screaming, oh, Eric, we're going to bring up tonight. She was called the name of Jesus. And so I'm, all I'm just saying is, we know she's a special person. The anointing is on her, and God has been good to her. So I just want to thank you so much for just calling the name of Jesus. And since you've been called the name of Jesus, I'm here, and, and we are here, we are celebrating. Because I really don't know what would have happened. It would have been bad. But I want to thank God so much uh, just for this day. And I wanted to come here to celebrate you because, I mean, that day, y'all don't know 
listen, five, six feet of snow, a lot of cars were in the ditch, but we made it all the way. I mean, 36 hours, and I didn't sleep now. 36 hours, I did not fall asleep. All because of church mom said, take my daughter home. Make sure she gets to open and So, hey, this is God bless you all.
began to call me boss dad. And I began to call her my daughter, one of my kiddos. You know, as a, and, as a, and as a acting father, I had some responsibilities. Because Shirley and I go to Oakwood University for administrative system. She majored in social work. So after a couple of years, I said she's not moving toward her social work. As she puts it, I was the first to hire her and the first one to fire her. <laughs> but technically, I did not fire, I did fire her. But she would not look for a job in her field. So I looked for her. I got an application to do what do in the Department of Human Services. Brought it to her, and then she did not want, did not want to fill out the application. I had to sit there and make her fill out the application. And I had to make her take it over and turn it in. And I had to make her go for an interview. She called me after the interview and she said, It didn't go well. I knew the person that she was in a room with. I called Joy. Joy said, is she real? <laughs> Phenomenal! They hired her. And then her journey began. I am grateful I was in a position. Yeah. Otherwise, she would still be an administrative assistant somewhere. <laughs> but now she went on. One master's and another master's, and then a PhD. What a, and I'm just grateful to be a part of this journey. I tell her all the time, she's my hero. She taught me about sickle cell. Now, I heard of it, but I never saw it up close. Learned so much about it, learned so much about her struggle. There with her, praying with her, but always inspired yeah. by her. Phenomenal, amazing woman. Yes. Truly, she's blessed. And I don't know anyone that can spend time with her that doesn't walk away. Inspired. Amen. And Happy 50th.
for a family that has lost loved ones, victims of homicide. And I began to sit there with Dr. Cheryl on second Wednesday of every month. And I was just sitting there in awe because the Lord, she was just so prophetic, um, just so strong and just so bold and just giving so much comfort to the family that were there. And so I began to, as she began to speak, I was just taking notes and I said, if she ever, if she ain't here on me, I got to just say these same words back to these people because they were so powerful. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so I honor you because the families love you. And we miss you, Bessie. But they ask about you, but because of all the love that you give to them and the support that you give them, it will come to words. It cannot be. I, I couldn't even begin to do that. But then I had to work with you with the domestic violence team. And I know that that was your heart mama. And she started a community coalition against domestic violence. And you know, people can start some things and it's women. But she started this group, I don't even think it's been six months. And it has grown and grown and grown. And people come and these organizations come because they want to support the visionary of this group because she has a heart for those families for the domestic violence. We've gone community laws together. We've done gun violence laws together. And I can tell you, if she, when she begins to speak, it's prophetic. We already know that it's anointed. And when Cheryl, one time she said, you can do this, she said, okay, we're gonna switch up this one. And you're gonna do the knee, and I'm gonna do the, I'm like, well, that ain't happening. So here we go. So I began to call her Dr. Aaron. And I'm Dr. Moses. Amen. And I said, because I can't speak like you can speak. Amen. So when we out, whenever we greet each other now, that is Dr. Aaron. And Aaron means strong warrior. Strong warrior. You are a warrior. And you will fight. Even when you don't feel well, you still fight for others who can't fight for themselves. And God honors you. He honors you, woman of God, because you stand when others can't stand for themselves. And I'm thankful that I get a chance to walk with you and walk beside you. And I always tell you, I said, I'm here for you. Whatever you need me to do, I'm here for you. And I will continue to be here for you because I love you so much. And I just want just a little piece of, you know, just the words that you have to say. I said, I'm going to hang on to these words. And believe it or not, last Wednesday, Dr. Sure wasn't with us. But it was funny because the lieutenant said, I took those too. And Dr. Cheryl not here, so this is what I'm going to say. I just want you to know we're mimicking you because you're such an example to us. We love you. Thank you. God bless you. And now we have the executive secretary of our Columbia Union. And those of you that do not understand the, the way the Adventist church is set up, uh, the collective churches in a particular area is called a conference. Collective conferences in a particular territory is called a union. And so uh, so we have one that is here that is representing the union vice president. Yes, I guess, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. So this is a big deal. So can, <laughs> love permeating this room. Somebody say amen. amen. I just, I am so happy to be here. I am just so thrilled and so thankful to be here because I feel the love that we all have collectively with this beautiful woman of God. I love hearing people say it's phenomenal, prophetic, powerful. No wonder purple is the word of the day. And as you can see, I'm making my contribution of being in place, okay? So I have come, and I am so thankful. Mike is the one who reached out to me. He said, Celeste, can we get something from the union? We want to honor Cheryl. And I said, I'm coming. I am coming. We are here. So I am going to read a, a declaration of a letter for today for Dr. Cheryl Shavers. And it says, warmest greetings and salutations. To, to Dr. Cheryl Osborne Shavers on the moment, momentous occasion of your 50th birthday celebration and to the many family members, colleagues, and friends gathered today. 
we, the executive officers of the Columbia Union Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which represents 152,000 members of 800 plus churches across the Mid-Atlantic United States, declare August 21, 2024, to be a special day in recognition of Dr. Cheryl Osborne Shavers. Celeste Ryan Blyden and Emmanuel Asadio. 
God bless you. We love you. Thank you. And now we will be moving straightway into a musical feature uh, with Paul Heflin, one of Cheryl's favorite singers. So y'all put your hands together for Paul Heflin.
I'm a preacher and a, and a gospel singer. I love the Lord. Anybody here love the Lord in the house today? And on all your crippled, got on all your royal. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. I'm going to sing this next song. It simply says, Amazing Grace. Probably one of the most gospel, famous gospel songs in the world. Famous hymns in the world. I'm a recipient of that grace. Anybody recipient of that grace? <laughs> know Cheryl personally, but I, um, uh, I know her through one of her best friends, and just to hear the stories of what she has done, it's a picture of the fact that you can do anything that God has called you to by grace. Amazing grace, how sweet that
mind, y'all. All right, now. I'm gonna say two years ago now, the Lord was speaking to my lifestyle of homosexuality. Yeah. So this woman who stands next to me, mother of four children, is because of the grace of God. God is able to do anything. His grace is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. So I stand with you tonight and celebrate you, Dr. Show. You are an inspiration. Yes. Your is. life is amazing. Yes, it is. And I praise God. I met your sister over there. And you see, you see your father, 85 years of life. You are blessed. You are blessed. All we do in this room, we celebrate the love that you share because of what God has given to you. I just turned 50 this year myself. And so this is, this is, this is, yeah, this is Jubilee. You understand? This is Jubilee. <laughs> And your sister was remarking how both of us have this smile. I'm smiling because God gave me something wonderful. You understand? Not only did he give me salvation, but he gave me a wife. And so she's going to do this song with me tonight. She didn't know she was convicted. Don't she look good, y'all? She's talking about she's sitting uh, She's pat on something and she said she looks like a box. I said, girl, that hourglass figure, you can look like a box if you wanted to. God is good. And I heard someone earlier saying about the name of Jesus. And being found in passion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given unto him a name which is above every name. And then every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God.
if you know Jesus. And if they can't smile at you, Yeah. Like a rock and rolls with me. Yeah. 
When I'm on the mountaintop, that's right. When I'm doing well, when I'm thriving, He is there. Yeah. And then when I'm in the valley, yes. yeah. And I can't even take care of our child. He is there because I am incapacitated. And I am so grateful for you. Like I don't have the words to express. I love you and I appreciate you and I'm grateful for you. You are good. Yes.
Listen, the funeral, thank goodness, I wouldn't be able to see it. So I thank you guys for letting me to see it here today. I really want to thank Brother Paul Hathlin and Mr. Brother Hathlin. You are going to love I will stalk you online as long as I ask confessions in the soul. I thank you for your ministry. I thank you for being here. I thank you for making this girl's heart do backflips. I screamed when I saw you, and someone was like, wait, Chris Brown is here? What is going on? No thanks to God. We are the man of God here who loves the Lord and uses his voice as an instrument of praise. And I'm grateful that you are here. Thank you for more than so much. What a blessing. And I'm going to get into trouble if I go around thanking everyone. I do want to thank my Calvary Seventh day Adventist family. Y'all have to understand when I moved here, didn't know a single soul, single young lady, all my family, another country. You all embraced me and loved me. And I'm grateful for you because now you're my family. And so I thank God for my Calvary Seventh day Adventist family. Thank you all who have traveled from far and wide. I'm grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You ladies.
you go try to get pregnant, you might as well try to do it now, but I can't keep you as a patient if you do because you're too high risk. Yep. And so I have to try to find a doctor that would, when I finally did get pregnant, every doctor said, nope, you're too high risk, can't take you. Finally, one doctor said, you know what? I don't think about taking you as a patient, but you need to come into my office and I need to have a meeting with you and your husband. Sat down and they said, you know what? Because of your chronic illness, because of your sickle cell, you barely have enough oxygen to sustain you, much less a fitness. And the doctor said, you know what? There's a high probability that you're going to miscarry. And then if you do carry a full term, this child could be stillborn. And then if the baby is born alive, this child could have some major deficits because of lack of oxygen. So I pose a question to you. Do you want to proceed with this pregnancy? And Mike and I looked and prayed. And God said, go forward. And he has blessed us with this amazing.
shade, right? Slave. Slave. All right, for being our musician for this evening. For this event. And so I can go up there. And we'll, oh yeah. And our audio engineer, Mr. Harris.
don't get no money. Me, you know what's the question? Listen to me at this time. It will be far too far back home. But that friend get no money. Then you shall come. Me, you know what's the question for that friend now that drums up. But everybody who looked and said, this is our God. We are waiting for you to save us. I ask his mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so now we're going to go to our music. Those of you that know the song of the week, you'll be able to sing along with it. It is our total praise. Yeah. 